Hello science fans! Have you noticed that our air quality has been bad for the past couple of months? <coughs> We've been haunted by the unpleasant smells of smog and fog here in Luzon. But just to make sure that we're talking about the same things, smog is a term used to describe a type of pollution that comes up from a combination of fog and smoke. Classical smog is primarily a mixture of smoke, sulfur dioxide, and fog. It is often associated with the burning of coal and industrial activities, and it has a thick, hazy appearance. It can often be mistaken for fog or haze. Haze, on the other hand, is an atmospheric event that is caused by the presence of fine particles in the air, such as dust, smoke, or other types of air pollutants that scatter or absorb light and thus reducing visibility. It can result from natural sources like wildfires, volcanic eruptions, or dust storms, as well as human activities such as industrial emissions and vehicle exhaust. Haze can vary in thickness and composition, but what makes it unique is it's just made up of fine particles, so it's dry. It doesn't involve water droplets like fog or smog. Fog is a weather condition characterized by the presence of tiny water droplets or ice crystals suspended in the air. Fog is composed of droplets of water. It doesn't contain significant amounts of pollution or particulate matter, but it can interact with them. And finally, VOG is a specific type of air pollution that occurs in volcanic regions and is composed of volcanic smog. It is produced when volcanic gases, specifically sulfur dioxide and water vapor, interacts with sunlight and the oxygen in the atmosphere. When it comes to the more and more frequent smog and haze formation happening in the cities of the Philippines, pollution from traffic is being blamed. And as a possible solution, the government is now advocating for the transition towards electric vehicles. Imagination! Will using electric cars really reduce air pollution? Is this a practical and sustainable solution for the Filipino people? But before I answer these questions using science, let me first say hi to our new viewers. My name is Chana and I'm your resident Filipina scientist. I'm a researcher in the field of molecular ecology and it is our goal to find the balance between protecting nature and improving our quality of life. I'm also a teacher who makes it a point to remind our students that we need to practice empathy whenever we advocate for the environment. And Shiensha is my science communication channel where I get to share the science behind current events, especially those affected by nature. Addressing smog in urban areas requires stricter emission controls, better public transport systems, and public awareness campaigns so that we can reduce air pollution. Interestingly, car manufacturers have been gradually introducing electric vehicles or EVs in the Philippines. In fact, the country has already approved a temporary tariff reduction on EVs and its spare parts to 0%. We even have the EV Industry Development Act, or EVDA, to promote the commercialization of electric vehicles in the Philippines. Some key provisions of this law include the development of charging infrastructure and the local manufacturing of spare parts. The EVDA law also mandates that companies and government agencies must include electric vehicles in 5% of their vehicle fleets. But what exactly are electric vehicles? Electric vehicles or EVs are automobiles that utilize an electric motor and a rechargeable battery instead of a conventional gasoline tank. But now, let's clarify the difference between an EV and a hybrid car. A hybrid vehicle contains a gasoline engine with at least one electric motor. This means the driver can switch between the two power sources or use them simultaneously. Hybrid cars don't require an external charging port because they recharge their own batteries. <laughs> Shifting to electric vehicles can help with their air quality, but to a certain extent. What? Electric vehicles produce zero tailpipe emissions because they run on electricity stored in batteries. 
This eliminates the release of harmful pollutants such as nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compounds that are common byproducts of internal combustion engines. Electric vehicles are also quieter than traditional gas-powered cars, which can reduce noise pollution in urban areas. The availability and accessibility of charging infrastructure can impact the adoption of electric vehicles. Note also that not all electric vehicles are energy efficient, so you have to choose the right model if you want to maximize the positive environmental impacts. The production of lithium-ion batteries, which are commonly used in EVs, involves the extraction of raw materials such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Mining and processing of these materials can have severe environmental impacts, such as habitat destruction, water pollution, and carbon emissions. No, God! Proper disposal and recycling of EV batteries are crucial to reduce environmental harm. And if these batteries are not recycled or disposed of properly, they can end up in landfills, which can pose both environmental and health risks because of the potential leakage of toxic chemicals. And finally, while EVs do not emit tailpipe pollutants, their overall environmental impact depends on the source of electricity used for charging. So in regions wherein electricity is produced using renewable resources, such as using solar power, wind power, or hydroelectric power, then yes, electric vehicles can significantly reduce air pollution. But in the case of the Philippines, only 20 to 25% of our energy comes from renewable sources. Majority are in fact coming from coal-fired power plants. No, God, please, no, no! These use coal as the primary fuel source to generate steam. And these are known to be some of the highest contributors to air pollution. The shifting to electric vehicles can also distract us from other possible solutions, such as the improvement of our mass transport system, the improvement of bike lanes and walk paths for pedestrians, and perhaps the transition to a more work-from-home setup for some of our companies. Of course, a move towards greener technology is always appreciated. After all, it could be the driver to push us towards the creation of cleaner energy. But until then, we can just end up creating a band-aid solution that could result to more harm than good. No! But what do you think? Is the Philippines ready to transition to the use of electric vehicles? Do you have any suggestions or recommendations on how we can protect ourselves from smog, haze, or any other type of air pollution? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. <laughs>